I have two stories about the state of education in America. The first from marketwatch.com. And, you know, th there's a lot of talk in the, in, the, in the bigger picture. Just if I may first on, on sort of background of these two stories about do we go back to school or not right now? Like, well, what is the right thing to do? And, and, and most people for the kids aren't concerned. They haven't gotten that propaganda. They haven't been able to make that myth stick, that there's any threat or really to anybody under 50 or, and, and, and without underlying conditions or, you know, immune uh, system issues. So there's a, a lot of talk about school staying closed till the end of the year. In fact, in the UC system, they declared that very early on, and that's University of California, uh, very early on that a, a big chunk of their classes are going to be remote all the way through the end of the year. And, you know, I, you know, I, I sort of applaud the anticipation there. Of course, the policy should never be that you have to, but that you have the option of attending classes remotely if you, if you feel like it and, and to not be you know, penalized in any way for that. That being said, the issue is not so much the students for those who buy the fear mongering. It's, oh, do you have elderly parents or family members at home or someone else in the house who's vulnerable? Why would we send you out into the, the, the global human petri dish of a school and then bring you back to, to them? And I'm kind of like, yeah, duh. That's why we shouldn't do education. One more reason we shouldn't do education this way in the first place. You know, and, and I'm not saying you know, hey, school should be all. All I'm saying is, is that school systems should be voluntary, right? That they should be forced on people. You know, I generally speaking, I'm a fan of unschooling. That's what I want to do with my kids. I want them to have uh, a self guided educational experience where we support them with resources and guidance and parenting and everything that that my my wife Samantha and I are are capable of giving them in a whole variety of experiences and exposing them to other kids and social situations and it's not homeschooling and a lot of people you know really screw this concept up when when they go oh libertarians for homeschooling like no well we're not for taking an institutional curriculum and then locking a child in the house and having them learn it there no 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 that's not the point of freedom and education and if you don't know the, the concept of unschooling uh everybody should be familiar with it but in a nutshell it's the student gets to guide their educational experience instead of having it regimented by, by a schedule or by a, a curriculum. And you, you, just one quick example, like you want to teach a kid how to read. Do you, do you sit him down in cemetery row seat him and seating and, you know, draw on a chalkboard in front of him and make him memorize stuff and repeat? No, you, you, you have them in, in, a, in a, a room full of, of kids where some of them are older and some of them are younger and the older ones are, are playing video games. You have to be able to read the words in order to play. They go, oh, I really want to read now. And so this is kind of, uh, you know, a point to the sort of one room schoolhouse, right, where a lot of kids of different ages and, and abilities were interacting. And there was that synergistic effect. That's, that's a much more natural state for a child to be learning it. And so to, to give them that, I think, is, is really, uh, you know, what every child deserves is, is, is the opportunity to flourish at their own pace to learn things when their mind is engaged and ready for them. But now we go, let's let's look at the government school system by contrast. The Market Watch story, it was chaos. Students get suspended for posting pictures of packed halls. Now the high school is closing after nine people were infected. Now in schools, there is another concern, not just you're gonna bring it home, but for teachers and, and for workers there, there was a nurse who resigned uh, from the school. but. Last week, pictures of maskless students crowding the hall of George's freshly reopened North Balding High School went viral and raised questions all over the internet as to whether getting kids back to school while coronavirus cases are still on the rise is a good idea. These are the kinds of tweets that were being shared. So there's just, just pictures of packed hallways, like typical high school hallways. And like, do, do I, I, am I the health expert? Is this, but, should you know when you you have the chance of having your kid 
you know, waking up and, and spending their day in a normal environment of uh, interacting with, I don't know, a few dozen people being able to practice good hygiene and distancing. And, and, and then, or, or should you pack them into hallways like this? I, I mean, I, I don't think this is a good thing anyway. Uh, I don't know. I, there's probably some experts that oh, no, herd immunity, and we're going to get all the all the kids are going to get sick, and there's a flu going around, and it's great. And I don't know, man. I don't, I don't buy it. I'll, I'll take. I'll, I'll wait for the science on that one before I, I draw any conclusions. But if you buy the mythology that's going around right now about coronavirus and social distancing, you go, yeah, yeah. I don't know. Kidding. You got a point there. Maybe not swirl them around in the global human petri dish unnecessarily by having hundreds of students packed in the hallways, you know, touching shared surfaces and, uh, you know, coughing around each other. I'm kind of, I, I mean, as a germaphobe myself, I look at this and go, nah, yeah, I don't, I don't, I don't want my kids in a sea of teenagers to no, no, it's a bad idea. Two students involved with posting the images were suspended including Hannah Waters, who said there was no social distancing, a 10% mask use race it, rate, it was chaos. If your customers complain about your service and you are able to punish them for that, they are not your customers. They are your prisoners. And that is a much better way to describe the relationship. I mean, if you had to choose customers or prisoners, oh yeah, prisoners about students going to government-run schools. Now, fortunately, they, didn't, they, they weren't able to stand by this position after a national outcry, the district reverse course, and the kids were allowed to return. This is absolutely bonkers that they would censor this. Like, I mean, you talk about discrediting the institution of government, of school, of government schools, of of the, everybody who's behind the coronavirus thing, like, wow, you're gonna you're gonna shut people up for talking about it? No. So this is where the nurse resigned. But now the nine kids, like, of course, I, I just this whole thing is abs is is ridiculous. Uh, tally of confirmed cases in Paulding County. 1,651, 22 deaths, 122, 123 hospitalizations. You know, I don't know what these, like, nine people were infected. Like, what? With, well, you know, with a test that has a 30% false positive rate, so oh, six people. And then, you know, with a, vir uh, with a virus that has a lower mortality rate than trying to spend a counterfeit $20 bill in Minneapolis, I will never get tired of saying that. Bringing us to our next story from cron.com. This is the Washington Post. School year like no other launches with chaos coast to coast. It's going to be screen time all the time for kindergartners and graduate students alike. Teachers are threatening strikes and students are already coming home infected with the coronavirus, which has upended American education. The 2021 school year has dawned and it's more chaotic than any before it. Plans are changing so fast that students and parents can hardly keep up. Districts that spent all summer planning hybrid systems in which children would be in school part of the week, ditch them as coronavirus cases surge. And just, all right, all right, I can't even get this far into the article without having to, to, to comment and translate. First of all, the thing about the, the plans changing, there's, there, there's such a huge... One of, one of the huge costs of government intervention in the market is the uncertainty that it injects. Whereas before you go, well, things are going to be like this. You can plan, you can anticipate, you can spend. You can't do that if you don't know if your business is going to be illegal next week. Right? Hey, if, if, if government comes out and says, hey, you know what? We exist. <laughs> and uh, we shut down businesses whenever we feel like it. And yours just act you kind of your industry. Uh, sort of on the chopping block might be just next week. Just uh, we might make it illegal. You're not going to see any new businesses started when 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 that's a real threat. And and we, even now, just to connect it to this story, the uncertainty of school. Do you buy school supplies? I mean, that's the if you think that's the most of your concerns, you're obviously not a parent. It's your job. You're gonna be. Are you going to be commuting? Are you going to be? 
taking your kid back and forth to school every day or not? Do you buy a new car? Do you move your house? Or you know, do you live in a different area because you were planning on moving closer to school? Well, now it's not happening. Now it is. Chilling effect, right? And there's a, a huge cost, huge economic cost associated with the uncertainty injected by government in any market that is really hard to factor in. And I don't say it's like it's impossible. There are a lot of great economists that are able to, you know, tease out some speculative numbers. But in terms of the numbers that you can, it costs this job or this, it doesn't even factor in all of the uncertainty costs when you look at from those limited metrics. And, and just the other thing, districts, that, I didn't know until I read the story, there are school districts that spent all summer planning hybrid systems in which children would be in school part of the week. The virus is not contagious on the days of the week when you say that school is in session and now it's worth bringing them in, but on other days it's not. Oh my God, go frick yourself with the arrogance, really. No, this is the, the, these are busybody administrators making themselves feel important, justifying overtime. I mean, this is, this is it, it, it is atrocious. It is offensive. So there's there's going to be more of this, and the story goes on and on and on and on with quotes and examples. I'm not even getting in, getting get into them. I mean, this is really just a whole other educational calamity, a component of the shutdowns, the lockdowns, the whole chronophobia crisis that we're experiencing right now. That is going to lead to a whole other set of ripple effects. I'm talking about economic ripple effects, with just schools shutting down, government schools, private schools. I mean, I, I hope private schools are, 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 you know, able to do better. I, I can't imagine they're doing worse than this. But if, if and the big silver lining is that children are getting more of a homeschooling, which may end up being more of an unschooling experience as a result of this. And a lot of parents are realizing, hey, they can do this. And if they don't need to trust the government school system with their child's minds for all this time and allow them to be conditioned and propagandized to being good, obedient wage slaves like their parents. You know, we can make the next generation better than our own. And right now I'm, I, I, I'm tempted to see the big good news in this and say, yeah, they went too far. The, the, the profiteers, the people behind this, uh, forgot that they also really do need the educational propaganda, I guess, conditioning system of government education in order to get away with everything else they get away with. And that part of the racket might just be falling away.